Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's gospel message from Matthew kind of reads like a novel or really a, ro- a road map. And it travels all over the place. It has a definite beginning, then it wanders around. And it finds a, a different ending. Or at least an ending in a different place. In this case, Jesus takes us away from what's familiar to us, something we are used to. And, then he, and that's a drastic change for him and for us. And in this message, we can see that something is strikingly different. Something almost seems wrong to us. Jesus says, do not think they have come to bring peace to the earth. Have not come to bring peace, but a sword. And throughout Jesus' life up until this point, he's considered the Prince of Peace. The angels saying about peace on earth and goodwill to men the day he was born in Bethlehem. Jesus himself said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So what's happening here with this gospel? Why the sudden change in Jesus? Because this is not the same Jesus that we saw in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night he was betrayed and arrested. And the Gospel of Matthew tells us that, and behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. And this seems to be the Jesus that we all know. But he's exactly who we believe he is, but we're confused now. You see, when he spoke of a sword, he wasn't at any time suggesting that we, his followers, be the ones to use it. He's telling them that he foresaw the persecution that they would suffer because of him. And he predicted rightfully, and his disciples did not fight. And neither did they provoke antagonism by showing a quarrelsome spirit. They did their best to fly under the radar, but they were sent out to tell the truth. And frequently the truth hurts. People hate to hear the truth. People get upset when you tell them the truth, and they don't, they don't stay friends with those who teach the faith. They become enemies of the followers. They become enemies of Jesus. In this gospel, Jesus is telling us that the sword is not used by his people. Instead, the sword is holy in the hands of the enemies of the faith. It was not a sword of an equal battle, far from it. No, the, the swords of Jesus' enemies were swords of cruelty and tyranny and persecution. Then once we think we've started to understand where Jesus is leading us, he, he changes direction again and takes us somewhere else. Some place that disciples of Jesus expect to be. And that's to a place where we are humbled. You may remember back, uh, I guess it's several years ago, I told a story once before. I was asked to officiate a busting of motorcycles at a veterans fundraiser rally in Lockport. And I was not at all humbled by that invitation, I gotta tell you, my head was just big. I was delighted by the fact that of all the clergy of all Niagara County, they reached out and found me. And in the days right before the event, I checked their website to verify the time and the date. And then they said, busting the bikes by the Reverend Bernie Green. <laughs> Boy, that took the wind right out of my sails. It was obvious that they chose me because nobody else wanted to. <laughs> but it put me right where God wanted me to be, and it was humbled. He wanted me to remember it's not about me, it's about him, it's about his spirit. And then we remember that life is better spent serving God and his children and not in serving ourselves. We're called to acknowledge Jesus above anyone or anything else. And he's reminding us that even something as simple as sharing a cup of cold water is what we're called to do in his name. Anybody like some? Well, you can't. But if we claim to love Jesus, 
that we're also expected to believe as Jesus did. That would mean that we should do whatever we can to serve other people as Jesus did. And that can begin with something, again, as simple as a cup of water. Many of you will remember a former New York Met and later New York <coughs> Yankee baseball, I have a hard time getting that out, baseball superstar Daryl Strawberry. During his big league career, he hit 335 home runs, drove in 1,000 runs, he named to the All-Star team eight times, a four-time World Series champion, and along the way, he became more famous for his well-documented and repeated struggles with drugs and alcohol. It was during a period in his life that it was, it was all about him and not about anybody else, especially not about Jesus. He, well, he's since become a preacher. And he frequently speaks about his many weaknesses and failures. And <clears throat> he does so now with great humility and honesty. And he didn't blame anyone else for his problems. He had a horrible childhood, and he could have, but he didn't. But when he finally surrendered his life to God, to Jesus, he was transformed into a new guy, a new man. He once said that, when I get to the end of my life, God is not going to ask me how many grand slams I have. He's going to ask me, what did you do for my kingdom? That's a good question for all of us. Because I never hit a grand slam. So what he's calling us to do is the same stuff God calls Daryl Strawberry to do. We are called to show the world that we are Christians by our love, by our generosity, by our obedience to God. And this is where the giving of even the cup of water that he speaks of is a wonderful thing for us to do, for others to see, for others to emulate, for others to follow, and for the people who need it to receive it. And the one thing that caused the early church to grow so quickly was the love that outsiders saw in the disciples of Jesus. They saw it and they wanted to be a part of it because it was unlike anything they had known. People today still wish to be on the loving, winning side. And we all can. And that's why I pray today that when we are persecuted because of our faith in Christ, that we know that we are not alone, but know that Jesus is with us throughout it all. I pray that you would allow Jesus to fight for you, that you don't pick up your own sword and give reason for more attacks. Don't antagonize the enemy with a disagreeable spirit. Love them, as Jesus did. It's hard to love your enemy sometimes, but it's what we're called to do. Most of all, today I pray that people will look at you and hear the words of Christ coming from your lips. See the love of Christ growing from your love of Christ. When it's in you, the, the kindness that comes through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ. So I pray that God would bless you today. That God would bless you with a spirit of love and joy found only in the Father and in the Son and in their Holy Spirit. Amen.